From EPN, this is Your World Discovered. My name is David Ewan, and my guest today is Massimo Marino. He is the author of Diamondus Trilogy. Let's welcome Massimo, I said that wrong, Mas, uh, Massimo uh, Marino. Massimo, that's right. Yeah, Massimo. That's, that's perfect, David. Thank you for, for having me in your show. You are welcome. It's nice to see you. Um, the interesting thing that we were talking about before we went on air is the initial background that you had in your career choice prior to getting into writing, which is more of a technical side. And then you had transitioned or included later on more of a creative side. Let's talk a little bit about um, how you ventured off in your initial career. Well, uh, as you as you said, my my uh, background and uh, and professional career is studying uh, in scientific research. So I work with a uh, certain laboratory in uh, in Europe. It's uh, the European uh, Laboratory for Particle Physics Research. Uh, so very much into into discovery and creativity as well, because uh, science and scientific research uh, is also. Uh, the direct outcome of uh, creative minds uh, with the rigor and mathematical precision, but you need to be creative as well in order to conduct research. And uh, in terms of veering off into creative writing, I have to say that uh, probably what could see my scientific research actually parenthesis between my uh, creative writing career because I started to write uh, fiction when I was a kid. Uh, just for myself, never thought about it to become uh, anything serious, quote unquote, where serious means to be read by others. Uh, but I started writing uh, stories, uh, short stories, uh, always with the flair of a science fiction genre uh, when I was uh, six or seven years old. Then uh, it was put on hold because of my uh, scientific studies, which were very much uh, uh, demanding <laughs> during my uh, university career in the studies and uh, the writing uh, muse and inspiration that I felt dead and rotten <laughs> after so many years came back alive uh, in 2011 where uh, suddenly a story found me and urged me to take pen or keyboard uh, alive again and, uh, and write what has become then a trilogy. And now there's a fourth book that is being published in, uh, in the next days. Now you're um, talking about the Diamondist trilogy. Um, t and right now all three books, I believe, are available. In e and uh, there's Correct. also an audio content. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, the Diamondist trilogy. And as you're doing that, um, let me just do a, a quick uh, reminder of uh, your website, and there's your name and website, and there's uh, a cover of one of the books, um, and of course of you, uh, Massimo Marino, um, all the way from France, uh, Massimo Marino, author.com. That is the website. Let's hear a little bit yeah. about uh, the uh, the Diamondist trilogy. Right. So it. it um the inspiration or let's say the in the uh, scientific curiosity came uh, when I um, got a few articles on uh, Time magazine concerning um, some as yet unexplained uh, death in the massive numbers of uh, various animal species all around the world. Uh, which they presented uh, similar uh, conditions and uh, in the way this massive calling of, uh, of uh, animal death uh, took place. And uh, the what if that came out of uh, the, as a birth of, uh, of the story is what if uh, all these uh, seemingly unrelated events were actually be related and part of uh, a larger scheme. So the, the idea was uh, uh, then uh, growing uh, the germ of, it, of ideas that these events were part of uh, uh, already established plan that was out of uh, human control and part of uh, the way we humans 
treat the world in, in general and treat ourselves. Um, so going from the uh, unexplained uh, massive animal deaths around the world with pretty peculiar uh, characteristics and aspect of those events into a larger scheme where humans as a race were under watch um, from uh, beyond the, the planet and, uh, and evaluated during the course of the entire existence uh, in, the, in the man history. Um, that then turned the story into a science fiction story and alternative history uh, trilogy as well with the flair of uh, first contact with alien civilizations, genetic engineering involved into it, and the transgenic uh, on transhumanism, if you want, aspect of uh, turning uh, our race, terminating it, and starting it anew afresh with a new beginning and new uh, genetic compounds. Now, one of the ways that this book has become successful is because you're able to write a science fiction book, but as an author, you have a very strong scientific background. Um, right. Tell us a little bit more of the integration of the realism of the science behind uh, the Diamondist trilogy. Well, the, uh, it's very, very good that you put it uh, at it uh, as uh, uh, as you did, because. Um, I believe that uh, good science fiction cannot be written if you are not aware or confident with the scientific elements that you put into a story and also a grasp of uh, uh, the scientific method of developing either technology or a scientific construct and framework where the story, the science fiction story then fits in. Um, my uh, background allowed me to create an organic and uh, self-sustaining scientific background that is plausible, that is credible, and uh, in principle that uh, can turn into reality if the right pieces of the puzzle are put in place. So in my in my stories and in the, in the, in the in the entire trilogy, uh, where I explore different possible scientific realities and. Uh, uh, novelties or consequences are all rooted in what is known to be today uh, proven uh, science and uh, exploitation of what the uh, scientific edge in the research uh, today is when adding uh, the possibility of uh, contact with the external civilizations and how this can actually be seen into a plausible scientific context. So my background really allowed me to um, have feet on the ground for the scientific elements in my stories and uh, avoid those stories to veer too much into magic and fantasies that in my opinion undermine the value of a science fiction novel. Now that we've established an understanding of how science applies to uh, science fiction and specifically how it pertains to your trilogy called the Diamondist Trilogy, let's talk a little bit more about how that scientific background began. You have a PhD in physics. Let's talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that background and, and the dissertation, oh, right. the academia aspect of your start in science. Right. So uh, I, I started with uh, uh, having a keen interest in everything scientific since I was uh, already in uh, in my high school uh, year, and then I started uh, started my studies in uh, in physics, and I graduated in uh, in 1987 uh, in Italy, and uh, my first uh, career experience was directly with the CERN laboratory. Laboratory. So I applied uh, to what is the most prestigious uh, uh, scientific institutions in Europe and probably in the world as well. And to my surprise, my uh, curriculum had been accepted uh, by one of uh, the um, the experiments and the and, and the uh, research lines uh, at uh, at CERN. And I was invited for uh, for a six month uh, uh, internship, if you want. And, uh, and then the six months became one year, and then it became an established uh, position as a staff scientist at CERN, where I uh, contributed to the major experiments for 10 years, uh, before then uh, being contacted by 
a professor at the University of uh, uh, California in, uh, in Berkeley. And they invited me to move over and bring my experience and expertise that I acquired uh, in the years at CERN to work with the Lawrence Berkeley Lab. All these activities always in uh, research in particle physics and um, focusing on uh, the analysis of data uh, that are collected by collision experiments at the major accelerators for CERN for the LEP at, at the time and then LHC, that is Large Hadron Colliders. And in the uh, United States, uh, working with the Babar collaboration, the Babar experiments that is based the, in Stanford at the Linear Accelerator uh, Slack. So in total, I've been uh, exposed to very much edge and uh, uh, to the limit of uh, the scientific research uh, in particle physics uh, for roughly uh, close to 20 years uh, before uh, starting to think about writing uh, science fiction stories, which, as, uh, as, you, as we said uh, before, are also fueled and based on what I know of uh, current um, knowledge in, uh, in science, but as well on fringe theories, and those theories that today flirt very much so with science fiction. One of the aspects uh, uh, today we do have the venture to have in science, uh, much more than uh, let's say 20 or 30 years ago for science fiction writers, is that uh, edge theories and the limit where we have been able to put the boundaries of knowledge in science are so uh, mesmerizing and so amazing that uh, we have probably an advantage with respect to uh, science fiction writers as before because uh, the possible outcomes of some of those uh, theories today that are yet to be proven uh, to be right and where technology can emerge are mind-boggling. What we believe is science fiction is practically already science under the science radar today. Now, we, now that we've established the particle physics, what is it about particle physics, or maybe it's something beyond that, that you have applied to your book? Um, or the right. trilogy, I should say, the Diamondist trilogy. What can now that we know a little bit more about your background? What can readers expect to follow in terms of your background that leads into right. your books? Well, the fact that I had uh, a scientific background allowed me to uh, acquire and do research myself on uh, other aspects of science that I needed for my books, uh, which are genetic engineering, for example, or the study of how the, the brain works and the studies that uh, today are done on the connectome. The connectome is that neural pattern that describes uh, everything that is about an individual. It's knowledge, it's reaction to stimuli, uh, it's even the way an individual think and reacts to external events. Uh, the uh, ability of uh, uh, studying what are the uh, research today for faster than light travels in the universe. Uh, things about the Einstein-Rosenberg, uh, Einstein, Einstein-Rosen uh, singularity that is the otherwise known as uh, wormholes uh, that allows to connect two very distant uh, uh, points in the universe but allow them in the right condition with the right energy instantly. So essentially giving the technological and scientific background or base to think that one day we could be master a way to travel uh, between stars or interstellar travel, so not just uh, uh, moving with, uh, uh, let's say, classical uh, rockets and uh, things that we, we have uh, today. And uh, being able to, to ask questions to neuroscientists, uh, biologists, and, uh, and other uh, experts on their uh, subject to ask specific questions about what I needed to put into my novels to make them realistic and plausible, um, which I believe if I didn't have uh, the, uh, the kind of uh, background preparation and also ability to digest scientific information would have made uh, the job uh, much, much more difficult, which might be the reason why 
sometimes uh, when this is not available to the writer, there is a little bit of tendency of using magic and fantasy in order to create outworldly scenarios for science fiction stories, which might not appeal uh, people who have a scientific background as well. You mentioned that uh, your books are realistic and plausible because of the background and that way, and because of the scientific background you have, there's none of this magic fantasy or fairy dust or, or right. anything uh, like that. Um, is that what has given readers a wow and an attraction to, and an appeal to your books? I, I wouldn't say that that is uh, what gives the wow. The wow really comes uh, still, uh, I believe, from the, the quality of the plot, the quality of the what if, and the possible consequences. But when you do present that, uh, knowing that uh, there is a, a real possibility from the scientific and technology point of view that that story might happen for real in the future, I believe that it might give uh, uh, some chill and eerie feeling in the reader because they know that is today fiction might have a non-zero probability to become reality in uh, in the future close or distant from today's world but the possibility is there uh, and I believe that uh, the uh, more discerning readers who are attentive or are keen to those particular details might get a little bit of uh, uh, chill and in their spine <laughs> when uh, they read some something that can happen in the, in the novels that I wrote. Now let's not give away spoiler alerts, but uh, before um, I jump ahead, I just want to go and share uh, people uh, for Massimo Marino. Uh, the website is MassimoMarinoAuthor.com, and we are talking about the Diamondus Trilogy. Um, now, without giving away any spoiler alerts, let's talk about a little bit of the plot. What, what uh, storyline is there, with, again, without any spoiler alerts, not giving mm -hmm. anything away? Uh, tell us a little bit about the Diamondus Trilogy. Well, the, the story uh, digs into um, many, many sources of inspiration, as we said before, things that happen uh, right now and in the past with unexplained uh, uh, massive death of uh, specific species of, uh, of animals here and there without a real um, reason for that to happen, that uh, biologists or researchers are yet able to understand what happens and uh, um, a look into the lore of uh, past civil civilizations, uh, the idea and concepts of uh, uh, ancient aliens and uh, some of the theories that have been uh, put forward by uh, authors like uh, Van Dyck uh, and others who see in some archaeological artifacts and archaeological mysteries the presence of external civilizations, probably external to our planet as well. And uh, with the, um, let's say, link of uh, the fact that uh, because of the sheer numbers in, uh, and the easiness with which life can take place in uh, even the most toxic environment, that we definitely are not alone in the universe. And uh, we are a very, very young civilizations. And there is in the universe enough time and space for an external civilization to have reached uh, technology expertise, uh, which becomes uh, the, their technology becomes the science fiction that we can produce. So if you combine uh, all of these, uh, creates the possibility uh, that gave them birth to to the uh, to the Diamondus trilogy, where the humans get in touch with external civilizations. These civilizations are capable of uh, doing things that uh, seems magical, but they are not, because as I said, they are still in the possibility of realms of science. If we and if we were to 
prove certain theories and uh, solve certain technological difficulties today, those things could happen for real. And in the end, uh, the opening of uh, the human race into a future that might seem a little bit like, uh, like Star Trek uh, saga today, where humans will be able to put their seed in multiple worlds and uh, uh, seeing the galaxy become uh, their uh, backyard, in a sense. Now, tell us about how the story is told or spoken to in the reading. Is there a main character or a collection mm -hmm. of characters? How, it is, how is the story spoken? Right. The, the first book uh, of the trilogy, uh, which is uh, called Diamondus itself, uh, is on the first uh, point of view. There's a main character. And uh, we are in the mind and in the head of uh, the main character who sees uh, this uh, post-apocalyptic world that he's confronted with and tries to cope with the mystery, with the tragedy, and with the frustration of uh, seeing the entire world uh, as we know it disappear from one day to the other. And all his uh, uh, evolution as a character uh, and growth as a character uh, from someone who he is uh, concerned by everyday life problems as we and you can have and uh, listeners and, and viewers have uh, to something that is beyond comprehension and he's trying then to uh, not to lose his mind because uh, what happens in the first book uh, would drive uh, crazy and mad uh, I would say 99% of the population in the world and uh, then accept uh, and be confronted with uh, um, an alien, advanced alien civilizations. The second book, because of the introduction of uh, more characters into, into it, is more uh, described and told uh, and narrated in, uh, in third person. So we are not anymore in the first uh, uh, person point of view. So there is a narrator that shows and describe what happens to, to the readers. And the same thing happens even more in, uh, in the third book where the human civilization has reached already the stars. Um, if users and listeners are familiar also with uh, the Divina Commedia from Dante in Italy with uh, the, his trilogy starts from uh, the hell, the purgatory, and then the, the paradise. In a sense, the Diamondist trilogy moves along that same pattern. A, book, a first book that is all tra tragedy and uh, difficult to accept situation, an in-between uh, situation that is the purgatory, where there are some thing or some of the events and uh, open lines in, uh, in the first book that have been solved in the second one, and then the final uh, retribution and the final resolution in the third book which might uh, be seen as the reacquisition of the paradise that has been lost in the first, uh, in the first book for the human race. Let's uh, do a reminder of uh, your website. Uh, the author that I'm speaking with today on Your World Discovered is uh, Massimo Marino, and the website is www.massimomarinoauthor.com. We are talking about the Diamondist Trilogy, the Diamondist Trilogy. And uh, we were discussing just a moment, uh, I say a moment ago, it was before we went on air, we were talking about that the book is also in audiobook form, or, or maybe two of them are, is that correct? Right, it's correct. The, the first two books have been uh, uh, turned into audiobooks. Uh, from a sci-fi publishing uh, LCC company in the U.S. who they found me or picked the, the trilogy probably because of the success it was having uh, on, uh, on Amazon and elsewhere. And, uh, and it, was, uh, it has been uh, quite an interesting uh, experience in terms of uh, listening to the different voices uh, of people uh, potential candidate narrators and see how well they were translating the mood and the feeling that I wanted uh, uh, to be transparent for a listener of, uh, of the stories based on uh, what was written in the book. So the first one and the second one 
are already available now as audiobook and uh, the same company has an option to turn also the third into into an audiobook i have no uh, uh, yet a firm date for that to happen but the first two books are already available for uh, for listeners and what are people saying about uh, the diamondist trilogy well it's interesting because um as happens with every book you have uh, lovers and a uh, and haters uh, luckily for me and for the novels uh, many ma many more lovers than uh, than haters but one thing that uh, surprised me is that uh, i had uh, people who really loved uh, diamonds and uh, it was their almost their first experience with science fiction genre for uh, for them uh, because i believe that uh, Science fiction is a, a genre that can really talk to everyone, especially if you write it from a literary point of view. And uh, if you talk about human problems that need to find the human solutions and you uh, show the struggle of uh, the characters in, uh, in a way that can uh, be perceived as a, uh, uh, intimate for uh, for the reader, so that the reader can really, um, let's say, confront himself with what happens to to the uh, to the characters in the story, and not being, uh, let's say, um, overwhelmed by what to me personally feel is like a, a B series or B level. Uh, a series movie, cheap movie that is just full of uh, special effects and robots and uh, lightsabers, uh, swords, etc. This is not what makes a good science fiction story uh, to me. I go uh, more with the with the classic uh, kind of uh, science fiction from Heinlein and uh, and uh, Asimov or Ursula Le Guin as well, where the science fiction element is important and relevant. But what happens to uh, to the characters have uh, a human touch that uh, is capable of talking to whatever reader from whatever experience. I have uh, people who have been uh, attracted by uh, Daimoness and like Daimoness because of the love uh, aspects in the relationship between uh, the, uh, the the characters. The uh, uh, struggle that uh, the uh, characters during the the uh, the entire evolutions of uh, of the story have uh, with understanding who they are and why they are there, and what is uh, in reality that makes a man or a woman a man and a woman. What is that makes us human? What is important uh, in order to be considered a human being with all that goes with in terms of responsibility, rights, and, uh, and duties. My guest today has been Massimo Marino. He is the author of The Diamondist Trilogy. The first two books are also available on audiobook. You can get more information about The Diamondist Trilogy at the author's website, which is Massimo. Uh, MarinoAuthor.com. This is Your World Discovered. My name is David Ewan, and this is EPN.